on the first day. Man was granted a soul, and with it, clarity. On the second day, upon earth was planted an irrevocable poison, a soul-devouring demon. And welcome to Demon Souls. All right, y'all. This is Tweech. Um, I'm proud to present the 100% walkthrough of Demon Souls for the PS5. I'm super excited about this. This has become my favorite game. I've been playing it for the last several months. I've been starting over, going into New Game Plus 5 and beyond. I start new characters, different builds. I'll tell you what, I am absolutely in love with this game. Everything about it is fantastic. It's so much fun, and I can't wait until more people get the PS5, and we could do much more PvP. Uh, I, I'm not, to be honest, I am trash at PvP, <laughs> just in general, uh, but it's still a fun time. I also enjoy the co-op, uh, running through levels and beating bosses with uh, just random people, or even my friends, so... Uh, absolutely love this game, but with this 100% walkthrough, we are going to find every single glowy, every piece of equipment, weapon, you name it. We're going to try to do it, uh, hopefully present to you everything. I don't think I missed everything or anything. I walked through this uh, with a pretty good prep. It took me about a week to really uh, try to put something good for you guys together, so hopefully you guys enjoy it. Uh, with that, we are also going to be looking at... Uh, Going through the entire playthrough, uh, the entire game, uh, having each world go through its white world tendency events, then changing everything to black world and tendency events, along with, that's right, the fractured mode, uh, so we can get the penetrator armor. So I'm going to show you all of that. Uh, the only thing I don't think we're going to cover uh, for the most part is 100% of the trophies. Uh, the reason being is because the trophies will take multiple playthroughs um, just because some of the souls that you get from bosses are used for different miracles or different weapons or different uh, spells that uh, it's going to take us a few times to go through in order to get trophies. So uh, I'll speak to those ones that we're, we're probably not going to do it on this one playthrough, uh, but I'll leave you in a great position where you can get that yourself. Uh, some things I do want to mention, since this is a 100% walkthrough, we are going to discuss some of the fun things that Bluepoint has done and brought us. Uh, let's start with the settings. Uh, in the game menu, something that some things that I like to do, I'm going to leave this on for now, but uh, you can auto-equip items. Uh, I don't like doing that. I turn this off. I want specific items into my uh, quick item, you know, cash. Uh, so you could turn that on, leave it on, or turn it off. I prefer it off. Uh, helmet, right now I'll leave it on. There are a few helmets that I just don't like, but I do like the stats, and it does complete kind of the ensemble, but 
some of the, the, the helmets are just not for me. So I turn that, I'll turn that off independently for now. We'll leave that on HUD. We're going to leave on, uh, I don't like the backing and, uh, colorblind options. Uh, pretty cool stuff that they added here. Uh, controller. I choose to hold the precision aiming style to hold. And what that means is as I'm using a bow, I hold the aiming button uh, to bring up the first person shooting perspective of a bow rather than just tapping the trigger and then tapping it back. So as soon as I release it, it goes back to uh, regular uh, gameplay. Uh, I like that feature. Uh, trigger effect I turn off. And what that means is that when you hold the R2 button, which is your... Uh, trigger command to uh, launch the arrows um, or bolts. Uh, if you pr if you have this on, you have to press a little bit harder. Uh, it has some pretty cool uh, physical features to the controller that uh, that make it a little bit more uh, immersive of gameplay. You know, so if you do like that, you could turn that on. For me, I just turned it off. It it's it's fine. It, it's really cool to play with, but um, it's just one thing that I like to uh, turn off. And then the rest of the uh, the basic controls, uh, you could change some display functions there if you'd like. Uh, audio, I'm not going to change anything. Camera, uh, language. Now network. This is where uh, some things have changed since launch of the title. Uh, private network settings. You can uh, set a password. As you can see, I I have one ready to go in case I want want it on. It's uh, Twitch 42, but I typically change that depending on who I'm playing with. But uh, if you want to play with uh, specific friends or people that you, uh, that you know that want to play the game, you could set a password on and you could link up that way. Uh, I believe the password setting, by having that on, it nullifies the, the soul level difference and the new game difference, right? I think the new game difference doesn't matter anyway, but uh, for example, if I'm soul level, you know, 20 and you're soul level 150, if you have the password on, we could match up and, and walk through the worlds together. Or even I could summon you to fight and uh, you'd kick my butt. Uh, launch state online. I suggest leaving it online if you're watching this walkthrough for tips, tricks, and, and even if you're you're joining us just to go through this game with me, uh you may want to leave this feature off. We're going to be playing in what's called soul, soul form, so we don't get invasions. We're not going to participate in PvP right away. Uh, there will be some episodes with PvP, but uh, for the meantime, you may want this off. Uh, and then the uh, selection of your server. It, there is a default setting based on your um, configuration of your PlayStation, I believe. So whatever server is closest to you, it'll default to. But you could change that as well. All right. Uh, really quick. Gallery is really cool as you complete the game. These, uh, I think I think these were already unlocked. I don't remember. Uh, but you can get some pretty cool art, really cool demon pictures, art stone. Uh, I like this really. Uh, I think this is really, really cool. It has the animation. You could record this and leave this as desktop. You could t uh, take some of these pictures, put them as desktop images, or use them. If you're a YouTuber, use them as thumbnails. Uh, it's pretty cool. So, uh, all right. We are going to start a whole new game right from the get-go. Uh, two forms, uh, female and male. We're going to do a male form. Uh player name of course the most important thing actually it's not uh <laughs> you could do uh let's see i typically use twitch uh, another uh, avatar of mine is kuvo i've been using kuvo for a long time uh, mainly when i play final fantasy uh, games but um we are gonna go with a funny one that i use pound cake I like, uh, I like to use pound cake from time to time. Plus, it's fucking delicious. <laughs> All right. Uh, class. Uh, this will depend on what you really want, your play style. Uh, if you're brand new to the game, there are some um, some ideas that I could give you and, and, and some advice. Uh, if you're going to follow this walkthrough completely, uh, we're going to go with the Temple Knight, and I'll explain that in a little bit. But if you love the magic, 
Uh, to use magic, there is a magician and a royalty class. Uh, 10 times out of 10, if you're going to play magic, I would suggest using the royalty class. And the reason being is that you get Soul Arrow, which is a pretty fantastic uh, spell. You get some pretty good gear. You get a... Um, I think you get it with the Magician. No, you don't get it with the Magician either. The headpiece on Royalty gives you uh, a boost in your MP pull, your magic pull, so you could cast more spells. And then the thing that really sets it apart from the Magician is the ring. The ring that you start with is a magic regeneration ring. So you could use your magic, decide you're going to use your sword a little bit, and as you're fighting through the world, your magic regenerates. Uh, you don't get that with the Magician. Uh, the, th the upside to what you get with the Magician is uh, a flame or fire spell. And I think, if I'm not mistaken, that is uh, Water Veil. Does not help you that much in the first world. Uh, Water Veil just helps reduce any kind of fire damage. And uh, Flame, uh, the Flame spell does hurt the boss pretty good, but nothing that you can't handle using the roy royalty. Uh, but for us, we're going to go with the Temple Knight. The, the build that we're going to go for is what's called a quality build. If you're new to this Souls series, quality basically means in this uh, in Demon Souls, your strength and dexterity are going to be your main focus for damage and weaponry. Uh, we're going to level up vitality and endurance. Uh, as the four main areas of our attributes. Now, we are going to put some uh, soul levels into different things, such as faith, uh, magic, and intelligence. Uh, I'll explain those as we go along. Uh, we may or may not touch luck. Now, luck in the original did pretty much nothing, uh, except for, uh, I guess there's a particular sword that you could use that scales off of luck. But luck is meant to be... Uh, a stat that uh, increases your drop rate uh, for different items. Uh, and it didn't really work that well in the original on the PS3. However, they Blue Point took over and they were able to uh, really make it a viable stat to use for farming. Um, and it does. It absolutely does increase. I've done multiple tests on this. It, it really helps out uh, item drop rate, but not the rarity of the drop. So there are some items that are quite rare. Um, the luck didn't seem to help me that much, but again, uh, I seem to get an item almost every kill uh, when I was farming for particular items. Uh, that being said, let's move on. Uh, you're probably getting bored with uh, all this chatter. Let's go with Temple Knight. And then the uh, starting gift. Uh, we're, since we're going to be... Again, doing a 100% walkthrough. Uh, give you some tips on how to get those trophies. Uh, trophy f that you'll need uh, is the is the ring trophy. Providential ring is what you want to start with. And it gives you a little bit of boost to that luck stat I just talked about. So, uh, good little segue. And sure, I uh, meant that. <laughs> uh, one other topic about the Temple Knight. Uh, as you can see... The uh, strength and dexterity is quite high already to start. Endurance is quite high. Vitality is quite high. And they're the main stats we're going to focus on. And then there's faith. Faith is also fantastic, especially if you're going for a faith build. Temple Knight is the way to go. You could also do a priest, which does have some pretty high stats for faith. Um, and it evens out the intelligence. However, uh, faith is really good. We start with a miracle of cure. Um, we start with a talisman of God, which we'll get several throughout the uh, the playthrough, and that's to use to uh, cast our our, our uh, miracles. Uh, but faith is uh, really good. It's actually my favorite build is the faith build. And then uh, character creation, I am gonna go. Pound cake is gonna be my blue uh, my blue face dude. Uh, there is a. Uh, foundation okay so you could do different types of walks where he walks a little bit higher shoulders lower shoulders it but honestly it doesn't really matter vocals yeah we'll do d gotta do gotta do the d and an appearance 
Uh, this is what my character looks like without a helmet uh, or without headgear. I just think the, the blue, actually blue is my favorite color, so I kind of like that. The eyes I made is like snakes. And you got to give your warrior a scar, right? So uh, you could play around with these. I'm not going to cover this uh, too much, but uh, there's some really cool features and things that you could do uh, and tweaks to your character that is unbelievable. Like, look how stunning this is. Yes, it's the PS5, but man, Blue Point, you are the shit. I like it. Uh, and then we're uh, we're gonna finalize. Um, all right. King Alant the Twelfth, by channeling the power of souls, brought unprecedented prosperity to his northern kingdom of Boletaria. That is, until the colorless deep fog swept across the land. Boletaria was cut off from the outside world, and those who dared penetrate the deep fog never returned. But Valifax of the royal twin fangs broke free from the fog and told the world of Boletaria's plight. That the old King Alant had roused the old one, the great beast below the Nexus, from its eternal slumber. And that a colorless fog had swept in, unleashing terrible demons. The demons hunt down men and claim their souls. Those who lose their souls lose also their minds. The mad attack the sane and chaos reigns. Valifax also spoke of the enticing power of the demon souls. Each time a demon claims a human soul, the demon's own soul is invigorated by the life force. And the power of a mature demon soul is beyond human imagination. The legend spread quickly. Mighty warriors lured by the possibilities braved the fisher to breach the accursed land. But none have returned. Bure of the Twin Fangs. Yet the silent chief. Saint Urbane. Skurva the Wanderer. The sixth Saint Astraea with her knight. Gahal Vinland, and Sage Frake, the visionary. The colorless deep fog slowly creeps beyond Boletaria's borders. Humankind faces a slow and steady extinction. The deep fog will eventually swallow all lands near and far. But Boletaria has one final hope. A lone warrior who has braved the baneful fog. Oh, has the land found its savior? Or have the demons found a new slave? Brave soul who fears not death. I shall guide you to the fissure. So that you may lull the old one back to slumber. Let's get it. Okay, so uh, definitely play the tutorial. If you've played this game multiple times, then you probably don't want to, but uh, it definitely does help out if this is your first time. So a couple things for you guys before we get started through the tutorial. Uh, on the top right-hand part of your screen, you'll see your souls. These are used for currency and leveling up, kind of like your experience points. Um, you earn those by killing things, pretty much. Uh, on the left-hand side of your screen, you'll see 
your normal stuff. Your red uh, bar is your health. The blue is your magic. Um, and then your green is your stamina. Uh, some of the things that uh, you may not understand right off the bat, the game doesn't really tell you a whole lot. Uh, it, in the tutorial, it gives you some basic functions, but it doesn't tell you what things mean and, or how to uh, operate uh, efficiently. So uh, that circle with that kind of glowing eye, it looks like, that is your character tendency. So right now that's called a neutral tendency, meaning you're not uh, to pure black and you're not to pure white. Every time you do certain actions within the world can change your character tendency, but it's based off of what you do to other characters. So for example, if you go up and murder an NPC, right? A, a merchant or a... Uh, you know, somebody that's meant to help you through your gameplay and you kill them, you start going towards the black character tendency. Now, if you are uh, in the world and a black phantom uh, NPC, we're just sticking with NPCs for now, which are the non-player characters, they attack you and they want to kill you, but they are in black phantom form and you kill them, you start going to, to pure white tendency and what that basically means is uh when you're closer to pure white the game does seem to get a little bit easier some uh some equipment is uh power and strength is based on your character tendency uh we'll go through that in much more detail later on but just to show you what that means in the bottom left is your uh pretty much everything that you got going on uh as a character so on the right hand uh when you're touching the directional pad uh, as you can see, I'm flipping through different things that I have on. Uh, so my weapon and the, uh, what is that, Talisman of God. In the left hand is nothing or my shield. Hitting up would be if you have multiple miracles or spells, you could uh, go through those. If you hit down, it'll uh, go through your items that you have listed here. Well, right now we only have some green healing. Uh Really quick about your uh, equipment menu here, and we'll go through the menu separately once we get to the Nexus. Uh, so one thing I like to do is take this talisman off of my right hand and put it into the left. Okay, so just to show you what that does is if I hit the left D-pad, it brings the talisman up. I could use it, which I didn't want to, <laughs> uh, but at the same time, I have my weapon out ready to defend myself and I could easily switch back without taking my weapon off um, the other thing is here's your rings you only get two rings you could use ammo and that's based off of what weapon for your ranged there's only two uh, bow and crossbow and then of course your items that you could set uh, on the right hand side are a bunch of your stats I'm not going to go through each one but you could kind of guess what they are the most important thing on the top right portion of the screen there where it says equipment burden. Uh, we are at 99.5% equipment burden. That means we are heavy. So if you watch, it doesn't look like anything's different. I'm running around pretty quick. However, watch when I roll. I'm slow. They call that the fat roll. We need to get under 50% I think you could get right at 50, but anything under 50%, uh, you will have a much quicker roll, and that's much more important than having beefier armor. So to show that, we need to take just about everything off besides our pants. So we're going to go through the tutorial without uh, just with our pants on. Okay, and now to show you the roll, much faster. I could roll out of the way much more important okay let's get it uh, you could read these uh, red dashes they they tell you all the stuff that you need um, just for basic control So you can see these are taking two, two strikes to kill. Roll 
out of the way. Gotcha, bitch. Oh, he jumped into that one. Uh, we're going to make our way up here and grab our first item. Some more crescent grass. All right, so... Got some more crescent grass. We're going to vault on over here. Hit forward and circle. And let's continue on. Oh, all right. Backstab. Saucy. Very saucy. So, uh, backstab you can do if you have... Uh, like I said, if you... Get right behind one of the one of the monsters here, one of the dredglings, or pretty much. Oh, this guy's a little a little thirsty. Um, if you get behind one of the uh, guys attacking you, even PvP, you could do a backstab, which does critical damage and could most likely one-shot most of these um, most of these monsters. So. Most of these guys. Uh, we are going to touch that uh, stone, but before we go ahead and warp out, let's go get one more item in this corner. And uh, we're going to warp out to our next phase. Forlorn Outpost. Uh, strong attack. Now, the strong attack with this weapon is is kind of strange. It's unique. It it gives a uh, that whirlwind attack, and it has two striking points, so just watch. You'll see. One. Oh. One, two. There we go. Um, it's also called hyper armor, which means as I'm spinning, even if somebody hits me as I'm spinning, I will finish the animation. I'll still take damage, of course. But I could finish the animation and still hit them, uh, which could be pretty useful. All right, parry. So that's hitting L2. We're going to parry. I am not great at parrying, but uh, yeah, let's see how we do here. Yeah, there we go. Nice. As they attack, you hit that parry button, and it opens them up for... Uh, Basically like a, a front stab kind of move. Now, you could say I took a little bit of damage from that because that wasn't a perfect parry. If your timing is off a little bit, you will... You could still deflect... But you'll take some damage, just like I did. Uh, Two-handed weaponry. When you two-hand a weapon by hitting your triangle, this is a much stronger attack, and it demolishes their poise or their their stance, and drains their stamina much quicker. Makes it easier to kill. All right, here. Up we go. Uh, we're going to pass that. You bitch. Just stood in front of him and took an arrow to the throat. Or no, to the arm. Look at that. Oh. That's stupid. That was stupid. Okay. Soul items. Uh, yeah, just save any soul items. We don't want to use those. Not for a little while. And uh, what you got? Oh, okay. You're gonna hit me too. Yeah, man. That same arm. You must have got a memo. Shoot pound cake in the arm. Okay. Um yeah, once you kill that guy after the fog, you're gonna we're gonna come down to the right here. And get some half moon grasses. So we're gonna equip those. So we have 15 Crescent Moon, which is a little bit of health regeneration. 
uh, or recovery, I should say, and then Half Moon gives you a little bit more. Uh, for now, we are going to use our Half Moon. Um, all right, and now we have, there's nothing else in this room, but look how beautiful. It warms my heart. How nice they did this. Uh, Alright, so now we got the boss, and really quick on the boss uh, strategy. We are going to run in towards him. We're not going to wait for him to come to us. It's very important that we don't do that. There isn't much room as soon as we enter the uh, fog gate. Uh, so we want to go right up to him, and we're going to go around to his right side. If he starts swinging at us, we will roll and keep on going to the right side until we get behind him. And then the name of the game is just keeping uh, behind the boss. Uh, you're going to hit his fat ass until he dies, uh, rolling when needed. He does a couple different uh, large swings. Uh, there's times where the swing might seem like uh, it's not going to hit you, uh, but it does. So I recommend rolling when he does start swinging. The other attack that he does is he jumps up in the air. You'll see his wings start fluttering. He can't fly. He's way too fat. Uh, and then he comes crashing down for an AoE explosion. Uh, it's a small a AoE, so you could just back up a little bit. That's time to get a bunch of hits in, or if you need to, use a heal. Try not to heal with him in front of you, ready to swing, obviously. It's not going to take much for him to one-shot you. With that said, let's get it if you're ready. Okay, we're going to lock on. Oh. oh, that was close. And you can see, we're going to hit his jiggly ass. We're doing... Oh, man. He's doing some damage to me here. I wasn't even paying attention. I was too close. Yep, there you go. There's his slam. Again, keep on uh, going to the right side. Um, or at least around him. I'm pretty sloppy on this one. Yeah, see, I, I still roll even though I'm further away. Because he has that like weird backswing part of it. That's what you want, huh? Uh, some of this could be troubling when he's close to a wall. Because if he gets too close, it's hard to stay behind him. Uh, not too uh, difficult if you follow those steps. Uh, do not worry if you uh, die to him. Okay, it does happen, especially first-time players. Um, he could be intimidating. It's it's a small arena that uh, is is pretty uh, pretty cool looking, I think, and could be pretty scary if, as you come in. Uh, but with that said, we're gonna get our great demon soul, and we're gonna warp to the next area. Uh, like I said, if you died, don't worry about it. We're going to meet you in just a moment in the same place, so it's not that big of a deal. Uh, we are going to, for your uh, rewards, we're going to be able to collect a few items. Uh, on the right-hand side of the steps, Iron Helm. That's a throwback to the original. Uh, and then we're going to work our way up towards Dragon God. Got some full moon grass. Doesn't matter which staircase you take. 
Um, just goes down here. More grass. So, uh, what you get for killing him, um, obviously, is 498 souls, plus some extra heals and some uh, material used to upgrade weaponry. Uh, again, these sharp stone and hard stone are so easy to come by, uh, it's really nothing groundbreaking. A uh, bunch of renowned souls. And then uh, that's it. That's what you got for baby the game. Just a little extra souls. And an image and a meet and greet of Mr. Dragon God. Let's see. I'm gonna kill you. I'm gonna kill you. But not right now. Withdrawn from its vessel. Let strength be granted so the world might be mended. Soul of the lost, withdrawn from its vessel. Let strength be granted so the world might be mended. So the world might be mended. is the Nexus. It holds together the northern land of Boletaria. Thou canst not quit the Nexus, but the five archstones will guide thee to the outer lands. Alright. So if you died to the Vanguard Demon, you would you would have seen this cutscene first um, and gotten the uh, Nexial Binding. Uh, what that binding does is allow you to warp back to the Nexus at any point uh, while you're in the game. The downside to that is you lose the souls that you're carrying. So I find it to be better uh, to not use that. Uh, Alright, let's uh, check on some gameplay here. What do we got? Uh, so the Nexus. The Nexus really is your main hub throughout the entire game. Uh, you can see these big arch stones. We, they're the different worlds that we will go to and conquer demons. Uh, there's a bunch of NPCs here. Uh, some more will be coming as we unlock them. Uh, and... I'm um, Thomas. Yeah, so... The Scots King. I didn't know what hit me. You could read, go through his dialogue. It's it's pretty sad. Uh, he is pretty much a coward. He ran away from the demons, but uh, left his daughter and wife alone. Um, but in order to repent and try to help things, he uh, is assisting any of the demon slayers like ourselves and uh, being a storage uh, unit for us. So with storage... Uh, I suggest putting all the fu full moon grass or anything other than half moon and crescent moon. The other thing you could do is put your souls away. We're not going to be using those. And highly recommended and 100% I'm going to tell you guys, do not use any souls, uh, soul items like that. You cannot level up yet. Not until you beat the first uh, world and the boss. So you have a ways to go. If you start popping these items and getting a lot of souls and you die in the the world, you have a good potential to lose the souls. Rest so it's never a good idea. Uh, 
Uh, the other thing I suggest, always throw material into storage. You don't need them on you to upgrade. Um, I am going to throw pretty much the stuff that I can't even use because of us being over uh, too, wait, too weighted. All right. Uh, next NPC. Mm. You knew this is our blacksmith. Something trade with your souls. So he could repair your equipment. Uh, upgrade, which we are going to upgrade to make our uh, first uh, world a little bit easier. Uh, if you beat the uh, the demon in the tutorial, you'll have these items and enough souls to go to plus one on your uh, halberd. Uh, what that does is give you a 105 physical attack and 12 bonus attack damage. Uh, you could also purchase some items if you'd like from him. He's going to be our early merchant and uh, blacksmith. You come back alive. I need your business. Quite frankly, not much else to do just yet. So you could run around, look around for a bit. There isn't much else uh, available because uh, we haven't unlocked anything. This side is going to be our magic side with all our magic NPCs. There's three of them. There's also going to be uh, a bunch of uh, miracle or faith-oriented NPCs on this side. Uh, she's already here, but she she's just a little whiny bitch. Doesn't really give you much. Um, and then a whole lot of empty space going up for the moment. So let's go right into it. World 1. Uh, you could talk to this guy. Yeah, let's just do that for the playthrough. Well, you slipped through the fissure too, did you? You came for demon souls? Or to save this land and be remembered as a hero? <laughs> Hunting for demons? Try one of the arch stones. Now go. That is why you came, is it not? To this accursed Politaria? All right. So yeah, yeah, he's right. Uh, we are going to go to the Archstone. And we're going to go to World 1. Boletarian Palace. Gates of Boletaria. Huge stone castle in the heart of the northern kingdom of Boletaria. Hungry soldiers attack trespassers, their souls stolen by demons, while nearby arable dragons have taken roost. All right, we are here. Okay, so first thing we're going to do, turn around, grab an item. Uh, to note, look at our health. We are half health. That's because we are in what's called soul form. Uh, when you die, you go to soul form. Um, which gives us uh, a little disadvantage with our health. When we uh, go to body form, that is uh, full health, but you can be invaded. Um, and the other thing that can happen is if you die in body form, you uh, can change the whole world tendency which means it could get uh, blacker uh, at a blacker state, which means the whole world will get much harder, which we definitely don't want to do just yet. Staying in soul form. Uh, if we die, it does not change our tendency, so that's why we're going to be staying in, in this form. Uh, to n 
to uh, just make a, a note of this uh, portion here is locked. We can't do anything. Uh, that will open up as we uh, start killing some demons and changing our world tendency back to uh, closer to pure white. Uh, we'll revisit that after a few uh, after a few demons are dead. Um, something to also think about is, uh, are these guys here, uh, they, when they jump at you, you can, uh, parry them, or die like I'm gonna do, oh my goodness, nope. Parry, parry and death. Die with your brother. So as you can see, as we upgraded the our uh, halberd here, it only takes one one hit to uh, kill these guys. They're just a one shot versus uh, two that we had to use uh, for the tutorial. Man, those guys did not drop me anything. Am I? Mm, they usually drop some fire items. Uh, yep, we'll get that shortcut in just a little bit. Come around the corner and run right up to this guy so he doesn't shoot you. Kill everybody. And be careful you don't fall down that hole. Stay away from the hole. Uh, you fall down there, you definitely die. I uh, I did try it, by the way. First playthrough, I'm like, man, it looks like a whole... There's steps, there's a whole bunch of stuff. I jump down and... Dead. Uh, careful coming through this next part to your right is an ambush. And uh, behind you, quickly, is another ambush. Wow, you still got me. Uh, roll on through here and get some fire bombs. Yep, that's what we want. We not we need to save as many fire bombs as we can. Usually, uh, eight to ten is good for the boss. That really helps out. And uh, pine resin is another fire item that we like to use. You, you punk. We are racking up the heels. Definitely nice. Go through the fog door and immediately go to your right and get some items. Mail breaker. Uh, that's kind of like your pokey uh, daggers type of item. We are not going to use it. Uh, this next part, there is a guy right up here above the steps and then right above my head ready to kill me. So I'm going to run up, kill this guy as fast as I can, turn around, and kill the bomb tosser. There we are. Nice. Okay. Slowly go up this way. And run up to the top. Watch these two guys. Uh, zigzag roll if you can, or just fight them, but be very careful. Uh, fire does a lot of damage to you, plus the guy up top is throwing firebombs. Man, can't time that. Pine resin, there we go. Thank you. All right. Uh, this item we just can't get yet. We'll get that soon. Look at that phantom following me. Uh, to the left, be careful, guy. Guys are ready to attack you. Don't fall off the ledge. Ah, 
sneaky, sneaky. Okay, kill the two up top and turn left for an item. Next part! How convenient. They put a uh, little red marker there. That's about where you want to go anyway. And run down. Uh, we're going to jump down here, get this item. The Bastard Sword! Sure enough. Uh, Alright, so I'm going to just touch on this really quick about equipment items. Um, Alright, so the Bastard Sword. Uh, it's a little bit longer sword. As you can see, it says uh, you don't have enough strength to wield this with one hand. However, I can uh, with both hands. And here's how this is explained. So right now, I'm going to hold this with one hand. Uh, I, could ha I could use it. I could still swing. However, you see on the left hand part of the uh, lower left part of the screen where the bastard sword is uh, shown, you'll see that orange exclamation point. Uh, that means it's pretty much broken. Uh, it's not going to do much damage. To verify that, come to your menu, hit the triangle button. On the attack power section on the bottom right, you'll see R weapon 1. That's right hand weapon 1, which is the bastard sword. And we are just hitting with a whopping 18 damage. So it's not going to help. Uh, that is because if you look at the bastard sword and any weapon for that matter and hit the uh, square button, it brings up some stats about the weapon. On the bottom of the screen is your uh, attributes. It says you need 18 strength to wield this. Now that's one-handed. Okay, so because I don't have 18 strength, if you look on the right-hand side, I have 14. I don't have enough power. So my physical attack power says 95 with a minus 76 damage so that's that you're 18 that they're talking about uh with that said i can two-hand it you see that orange exclamation point goes away uh check the power and my attack power for uh right weapon one it goes to 105 so now i can wield this and do damage however i lose the ability to use my shield effectively um, at the same time, I'm going to be using a sword. So there's your trade-off. And that's how all these weapons are. We are going to continue to use this halberd. Because I enjoy it. Plus, we just increased it to plus one. It does much more damage than the bastard sword. He didn't drop anything. Oh, how the shit. All right, so once you come up those steps, uh, you want to kind of turn around and go backwards over this bridge here. <sighs> Without dying, hopefully. get some grass now uh, up here uh, I'm gonna suggest not even going for this guy uh, the red Knights early on are very deadly they could one-shot you especially with half health um, and you could see one glowy behind them it's really not worth it. it is a soul item that you can't use anyway until you beat the boss the other thing is he early on he, he drops a lot of souls. I think it's something between 15 and, you know, 1,500 or 2,000 souls, which is a lot right now. Uh, again, you can't even use them. Nothing else back there for the moment, so let's just uh, we'll just forget about them. But if you wanted a challenge early on, go ahead. Good luck. We're going to go over here, fight the blue guy. He, he is much easier. We are going to take our shield out, though. And try to backstab him, as we did. Gotcha, bitch. Okay. Uh, we will be going that way first. Uh, before we go down the fog, I should say. However, 
Uh, I shouldn't say first because we're going to drop down here first. Drop down. And we are going to get a crossbow. Now, I, I'm not a big fan of the crossbows, but uh, put your crossbow in your right hand slot number two. Come down and don't forget to equip your bolts. That's how, uh, if you don't equip the bolts, you cannot use the weapon. I don't think he had an, an item, right? He didn't drop anything. Nope. Okay. So kill him, roll off the ledge, and back up the steps for yet another trek around this area. And up we go. Okay. Now that we beat, uh, we beat that guy, got that. We're going to continue forward. We're going to go down to the bottom of this uh, this tower to open up a shortcut. Ooh, more fire bombs. And to uh, to get for our playthrough one of the the best uh, rings for our playthrough. Throw your little fit, and then we're going to kill you. Okay. Uh, you'll see at the bottom here, I'll describe what that ring is. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Crush. Goodbye. Thank you for playing. Just be careful about not falling off the ledge here. You don't want to die here, especially when we're so close to the, uh, the uh, shortcut. Uh, come out here. And chop down, uh, chop these uh, these chains. They held two bodies. You could see. Let me go into photo mode so you could see. Yep, you see the two uh, bodies down there glowing. Uh, two items. Uh, spoiler alert: They are the bodies of the wife and daughter of uh, Stockpile Thomas that uh, help helps us in the Nexus. So we'll go back and tell him about his uh, family. That coward. Uh, half moon grass. And then we are going to put on our fire bombs. Now, you could opt to not use fire bombs. I tend to use them here. Just go nice and slow. And uh, you'll see a whole bunch of these guys. There's two guys down there and three over here. Go to, you could lock onto that middle guy next to the barrels. There we go. And throw a bomb. You should be able to take two of those guys out with that explosion. Take that guy out with an explosion. And you're going to come down here. Now, sometimes we could get it where one of these guys rolls off. Yep, there they are. And they're going to swing, hopefully. Yep. They kill themselves. That's exactly what we wanted. They jump down. They start swinging with the barrel there, and it explodes. <laughs> Dumbasses. All right, come down here. If not, if that's not the way you took them out, just just fight them. They're not that difficult. And open up the shortcut. Get our cling ring. Yeah. Now look at our health as is. We're gonna come over here. Put the cling ring on, and magically we have more health. Ends up being 75% of our total health. That's going to help us in soul form. Okay, we'll pick up the uh, mage equipment and uh, his daughter's hairpin, unfortunately. Very sad. All right, we're going to send that to storage. Keep the jade ha ornament on. It's It doesn't cost any... Um, any weight. Uh, we'll send that to storage. We're just going to discard that. Uh, se Oop, no. Send this to storage. Okay. And now we work our way back up. Just to for a point of reference, this is where we started the uh, the world. If you die. Uh, you could. That's where you respawn. You could come right back up here, and you don't have to go through all that bullshit again. You just come right up these steps. However, 
Keep in mind, all five of those uh, fire flame dudes are going to be sitting there waiting for you, so you might want to uh, lure them out one at a time. Now we make our way back up. Yeah, this episode's going to be a little bit longer, um, just because there's a lot to explain early on. Uh, subsequent plays or uh, subsequent videos should not be as long, but I don't want to promise that because uh, I want to try to do one world uh, per video or as close to it as possible. Um, and that's without doing any of the world tendency stuff. They're going to be their own separate videos. Okay, let's go through the fog. Uh, we will be going this way to get that item. That is a, another powerful ring, but uh, first I want to show you the merchant. Uh, so make your way along this, uh, this path. And let's go kill this guy. Nope, no more bombs. What? And here's the merchant. Roll through all these barriers. Good day to you. Mostly stolen, but who's telling me? Now the merchant's in the first world, so each each archstone has separate worlds within it. Uh, this is referred to 1-1, one, one, or 1-1. One one. Uh, the merchants in the first worlds, like 1-1, one one, he, as you uh, beat the bosses and move on to world 1-2, he moves with you. So once you beat that boss and open up the next portion, he won't be here. So don't think you have to come back to this location to, uh, to buy anything. He moves into the next world. Uh, he has some things here. I, I've been doing this the last couple playthroughs, so I'm going to show you. I'm going to buy a few more. I think I'd buy 10. Was it 10 bolts? Uh, yeah, I'll do 5. I'll do 15 bolts. Okay. Uh, we're going to be using those coming up, but you could buy some stuff here, more fire bombs if you like, but uh, nothing that you absolutely need for right now. And then we're going to make a right here just to show you uh, this room. Keep in mind this room with all the barrels. Okay. Uh, we're not going to go this way just yet. So uh, just keep in mind that room. We're going to come back this way. Back to where that drop down is. All right. And jump on over. And grab the thief ring. So now you could you have a decision to make here. You could uh, take off the providential ring or and then use the thief ring. What the thief ring does is it kind of hides you from enemies up to a certain range. So they just can't see you until they're like pretty close to you, which is very helpful, especially if you have a bunch of rangers or uh, magic casters from far away. They kind of don't even know you're there. Uh, you. I would suggest putting that on. I am not going to use that for this first part. I'm going to use the providential ring to try to get a few more items that uh, for the boss. Either way, uh, you could you could do whatever you'd like. Now talk to Ostrava here. Surprise indeed. Well, now that you are here, pray thee, fend off these dreglings. Uh, and this is why I bought more uh, bolts. So we are going to use the bolts. To, uh, to shoot at these guys. Again, it's not extremely accurate. Not my favorite type of weapon. It takes two bolts to kill them. But it's better than using uh, fire bombs and stuff that we're going to need for the boss. Um, this literally is the only time I end up using... 
a crossbow. <laughs> uh, this and maybe one other time. Uh, I definitely don't use it often. What? Um, yeah, see, this the accuracy on it is, is junk. So, we're just going to go down and crush this. Oh, there's... I did see all of them there. Anyway. Talk to Estrava once they're all dead. Brave rescue. I am a... All right, so he uh, he gave us a telescope that I have never actually used, other than turning it in for a different item. Come up here to the steps. Kill the first guy and the second guy of the ambush. And we're going to let Ostrava go tango with uh, this blue knight here, who's real pain in the butt. Go behind if we could backstab or kill him without hitting Ostrava. Come around and grab the scimitar. Scimitar is a nice weapon. It's more of a dex weapon, but uh, you could still use it if you're uh, on this build. It's a one-handed weapon. Come on, dude. Come on, stinky. Get out of the way. Kill the archer and to the right soul item. Whoa, Strava. Do your job, man. Yeah, come over now as that guy's uh, coming at me. All right. Uh, this time I'll use a firebomb or two. Could kill uh, a few of them. And, uh, yeah. We'll come down here. Take the couple of these guys out. Oh, I can't move. That guy. Yeah, thanks a lot, Estrava. <laughs> Guy's a prick. And some more crafting material. Like I said, uh, if you were not able to beat the, uh, the tutorial demon, you're uh, able to get those crafting materials in this board anyway, so don't, uh, don't worry about it. And let's see. We're going we're gonna to let our boy here Come on, Estrava. Let's see. Go get him. Go get him, champ. Go get him. Holy shit, you suck. All right, I'll, I'll take care of him. Oh, Ooh, you hit him good. Get him. Get him. Come on, Estrava. Come on, Estrava. That's it, my boy. That's it, my boy. Let's see. Let's give him some claps. Yeah. Way to go. Way to go. Go get him. Alright, so that's all he does. He just walks this area back and forth. So he's actually no further help at all. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, 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 hey. Calm down. See, this is where the uh, thief ring really helps out. These guys would not attack like that if I had the thief ring on. But like I said, I'm trying to get a few more items. It doesn't seem to be working. I uh, got some heals. I'm, I'm looking for more uh, fire items, bombs, or pine resin. Okay. Uh, before we go up these steps, we're going to turn around and go this way. Just to show you where uh, we're connecting here. So just run through quickly. And to the left, remember this room? I said, watch the room with the barrels. Um, this is where it leads. Now those guys... Those guys that just appeared with the axes here... They were actually up top here and jumped down. It's part of an ambush. 
Uh, so that's why I suggest to go around the other way. Uh, but we are going to run through and up these steps. Okay, turn around and get this guy. Thank you, sir. Uh, we have a blue knight at the top. I suggest just running up on him. And I couldn't see for a moment. There we go. Oh, he has an item. I'm going to jump down there. Or go down there. Am I jumping down? Crazy. Crazy bastard. Collect some items. And we're just going to go down and see what uh, Archery Boy had. I think it's going to be Crescent Moongrass. Oh, damn. Soldier's Lotus. Oh, good. Uh, Soldier's Lotus. Uh, open up your tool belt. Uh and how you do that is uh, hitting the middle uh, pad of the uh, the controller on the right hand side of the pad uh, opens up your tool belt. The left hand side of the pad I have as your uh, photo mode. Actually, I don't think I discussed that. Controller. Uh, look at the controls. Yep, that's it. So the touchpad down here. You could customize. I believe it starts at photo mode, both sides. I keep one photo mode, and the other, I do the the uh, tool belt. You could do other things, too, with it. Uh, you could decide, you know, you don't want photo mode. You want gestures. You just want it disabled. You want to put messages up. Um, I find photo mode actually very useful, and the tool belt I use. So... Now that we got that straightened out, let's hit the tool belt. Uh, I put all the flowers on here, so stopped bleeding. Uh, just an easy way to uh, quick, quickly get an item. Tool belt will also help us use uh, messages, uh, leave or leave messages, use gestures, and then you could also do photo mode, which is uh, fine, but. Um, I, like I said, I have photo mode set up a different way. All right, let's let's uh, let's go up and continue on. And we're going to enter the fog gate. Oop. Okay. Oh, entered photo mode. <laughs> All right. All right, so around this corner, be very careful. We're going to come up to the green uh, plants here on the corner, and you can see what awaits us. If we went running down there, that awaits us. And you see the dragon, which is very cool. Uh, so turning around, you'll see these big balls. You don't want to be hit by the big balls. Nope, no big balls. So what we're going to do, Come over to the side here, uh, right on the corner, and just use R1 strike. Should break through the trap, and just watch all those souls. Those poor souls. Bye-bye. Okay. Uh, and we're good. And let's go get our items. Wow, quite a bit. A lot of grass. Gotta love the grass. And a soldier's lotus. Nice. Okay. Uh, yeah, just look at uh, look at Balatari. I wish there was ways to go down there, or if there is just a little bit more to uh, to the world. But either way, we're good. Uh, all right. This next part could be a little bit tricky. There are two spear brothers that are pretty tough. Just around the corner. What I'm going to suggest is walk slowly up this way and uh, see if you could pull one of them. Just like that. He saw me. The other guy didn't see me. And take one out at a time. Yep. See, now he... Two. Three. And that's it. 
Okay, if you come running up here, they both attack you all at the same time, and they kind of synchronize their attacks, so it, it could be deadly pretty quick. As you can see, there's a lot of blood stains here. You can see he's trying to get them, getting smacked, getting smacked, and smack, smackola. Down to the left are the dragons. Up to the right is the bridge. Kill the first guy and then hug this little wall here. They can't hit you. Look at all that bullshit. Well, Mr. Dragon, Mr. Dragon. And get him. Yeah, Dragon. Clear the path. So we collect those souls. We will be going that way, but not quite yet. That is the way to progression, by the way. We're going to run down this way. Um, now, for more experienced players, you can definitely uh, do what I just did here. I'm not going to do it because uh, it's a little bit harder for newer players. I could get m a bunch of these items. Probably half of these items by the time that red dragon lands. The blue ones are a little bit more difficult. You or the uh, by the blue dragon, you need to roll, time your roll just enough so that his uh, big tail doesn't poop you. A lot of good stuff there, but we're gonna get those later. Instead, run along the side like I did here and get two items: archstone and some grass. Um, Alright, so the Archstone is used to warp back to the Nexus at any point in the world um, without losing any souls. Very, very useful item. However, early on there's not a lot of them around, so I just choose to save them. Um, the first two item, or th this item above my head here, is, uh, I believe it's a, a soul. And then there's some a good shield there for the next one next uh, world and uh, yeah some other cool items but when we change this world tendency to pure white we will these guys will be gone and we'll have our easy pickings at the at the loot and that's that's gonna be our play now, as you come up to the steps just go don't wait for the dragon he's gonna take a little bit longer to get to us you're gonna hear him don't worry uh, just run across, slightly zigzagging, so you don't get hit. And kill these guys. Again, I wouldn't worry about these items. I think it's just grass. We don't. We have 21 right now. So, now that we're past the dragon, uh, we're going to come down directly to the right. Get an item, soul item, and now opening the boss door. you die. Uh, he might have uh, had all these guys coming at him. Okay, go down here, make a left, watch out for Dredgling, and one behind you. Yep, here we go. Alright, roll through these... Uh, this, uh, this wooden stuff and grab some pine resin. That's what we want for the boss. Alright, we're going to charge in here and start killing. Or be killed, I don't know. Oh, come on, dude. 
How did I not kill that guy the first time? And done. Not a pretty way to do it, but I prefer going in there. Oh, jeez. Tell you, these guys get thirsty. Now be careful with locking on, uh, especially around these steps. If I lock on and walk straight, I end up walking straight towards them instead of uh, down the path that I, I want. So just be careful with how you're doing that. Ooh, you got me. Yep, try to work your way around these guys. Uh, obviously, they're very strong from a frontal attack with that huge shield. But once you get behind them, they are what they are. Squishy. Squishy. Out to the right. Let's see. Soul item. Look at that. Uh, and then, yeah, right over there was that other tower. Right above my head was the uh, the doorway where we hit those chains and those uh, the poor, poor bodies uh, fell. And there's the start of the world. And you could see the fog door we opened. Ready to kill the boss. How the hell did you get me? I rolled, I rolled, I rolled. Now, sometimes these guys drop uh, upgrade equipment or upgrade material. Yep, there we go. What do we get? Sharp stone. Nice. Not a great farming spot. There's a better one after the boss. Okay, open up this path. And we are at the boss. So we're going to go with full health. Yep, you can see their spear. One of the spears. Is your name Brittany? Haha. <laughs> Dad joke. Number one of the, the walkthrough. Okay. Uh, Alright, so tips for the boss. Uh, we have seven fire bombs. We're going to use all of those. Uh, most of them, maybe. Maybe all of them. We'll see. Five pine resin. We want that there. Uh, I will leave... Actually... Yeah, I'll leave the providential ring on. Uh, nothing else really matters that much. But uh, as we go in, make sure you have your bomb set. We're going to go in and run directly to the right. Pretty much go behind the boss to start. Uh, and then we're going to start bombing them. Uh, bombing, bombing the boss... And how we're going to do that is we're going to select the highest part of the boss that we can because there's all those squishy guys with the shields all over the boss. Um, we want to kill those. Start at the highest point because that bomb that you throw spreads out. You could kill a few of them at a time. Uh, once our bombs run out, we will then go to our uh, pine resin since this thing is weak to fire. Uh, and that should be it. He's... She uh, she really isn't that tough, and it is a is it uh, it is a she, and I'll show you right at the end after we kill her. Uh, all the Boletarian bosses have uh, something real special that uh, Blue Point put. I think Blue Point uh, put them in. I don't remember them being in the first uh, uh, rendition on the PS3. All right, let's go. Phalanx lives up to the name. You can kill these guys as you go. Um, select. Get a couple of those. Man, what are you doing, boss? That never happened. She never uh, went around that way. And you can see a whole bunch of these guys are not even on her now, so you could take this opportunity. To uh, hit her. And then she'll uh, she'll start stacking up these guys again. Uh, 
Now, you don't have to kill all these guys. Uh, once you kill the boss... Um, look at they're not even on her, so... Is that my last? Yeah, that's fine. Alright, now for some pine resin. Oh, man, you're left wide open, man. You're gonna die. Or maybe I will. Just power through and chop her down. So, this is the part I was saying. If you look close enough, you could see a character right there floating up. It's a female archer. Yep, fantastic. Uh, but, after the boss is dead, I'm just going to take a look. I don't think there are... Didn't drop any shards. Come on, I got a flaming stick here. Nothing. Alright. And with the boss dead, you can see we gained quite a bit of souls. Uh, on top of that, we got our body form back. Every time you kill a boss in soul form, you uh, you get your humanity back, your body form. Uh, right now, because we're in a boss arena, we cannot be invaded. However, if we continue forward, there's a good chance that we can be invaded. So, in our walkthrough, we will be uh, warping back to the Nexus after each, uh, each boss kill. Welcome back. The Monumental awaits the above. The Monumental will explain the Nexus to thee. All right, so now that the boss is uh, dead, you can see we have a new NPC here. Uh, this is our soul waifu. The monumental will explain the nexus to thee. Okay, soul waifu. Uh, before we could do anything, we need to go talk to the monumental. Um, you know what? Let's see. That is a bit of time. We are going to tackle the Nexus in the uh, next episode. Uh, so stay tuned. Uh, we'll do. We'll go talk to the Monumental, get everything in the Nexus, go through the NPCs that we have, and start leveling up uh, before we go into the next uh, portion of World 1. Uh, the reason being is that World 1-2 is quite a quick level. Uh, there isn't a lot to it. Uh, and in fact, before we even go to 1-2, I'm going to venture into uh, yeah, maybe a couple of these worlds here. Yeah, I think that's what I'll do. Uh, there are some starting weapons that you could get early on in the game. Specifically, uh, because we have some strength built up, there is a really cool battle axe to get called the Crushing Battle Axe Plus One. Uh, that scales off your strength. Uh, and then in World 4, there is a Crescent Falchion Sword that's based off of magic. Um, we're going to get both before we move on. So, with that said, thank you so much for watching the first uh, walkthrough episode. And uh, uh, check out the next one for uh, further content. And uh, we'll see you uh, next time.